You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Dr. Barbara Eaton's 56-Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, Dr. Alok Trivedi, The Black Diamond Club, Element Mattresses, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, MedZone, Vantage Point Marketing, Movo University, The Universal Tractioning System, Imaging Services, and Zingit Solutions. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 56 of Cairo Hustle. I am your co-host, Luke Millette, and here's your host, Jim Chester. Hey everyone, today we have the honor of talking with Amanda Appleblatt about what she's doing up in Michigan, and if you guys want to become an associate for her, she has big vision up there. What is your chiropractic story, and what influenced you to become a chiropractor? So, I always knew that I wanted to be a chiropractor, probably in fifth grade, and my mother was a nurse, and I remember telling my mom I wanted to do something in the health field, and I thought I wanted to be a doctor, and when I said that to my mom, at that time we assumed medical doctor, and my mom said, well, do you want to be on call and spend the night in the hospital? And I thought, no, I do not. And she said, do you, you don't like blood? And I'm like, no, I do not. And so she said, well, okay, let's look at doctors who, you know, when you're not attached to a hospital or you can be in your own private practice. So literally in fifth grade, because I am a nerd, I was researching this and I looked at podiatry and optometry and chiropractic and podiatry was feet and blood and I thought no and optometry is awesome but it would be very repetitive and A or B and one or two and you don't really see people a lot and third was chiropractic and I thought that is exactly what I'd like to do because I'm a people person and you get to see people on a regular basis and you know, it's about relationships, and I thought that was totally up my alley. I was into natural health, and I just thought that we always went to the chiropractor, and I thought it would be a, a great field. So the crazy thing about my story is that it's not crazy because most of my friends who are chiropractors, um, you know, fell out of a tree or got hit by a car or, you know, had some crazy health issue that a chiropractor really, really helped them with, and I think that's absolutely amazing and wonderful. But I love my story, too, because it's someone who researched fields and thought that this would be a great uh, a great career for them. And I don't think I could have ever, I know that I could have never picked a better career. So I actually knew I was going to be a chiropractor in fifth grade. And I remember going to my friend's homes in high school. I went to an all-girls high school. And all of the other parents really loved me. And they would say, oh, hang out with Amanda because, you know, she's going to be a doctor. She already knows what she wants to do in college. And, and so I, just, I always knew. So I'm so glad I never, um, I never swayed, and I'm so glad that I became a chiropractor. I think it's the greatest field in the world. So that's, that's my chiropractic story. So, so how long have you been at it then? So um, I've been in private practice for 15 years this July 7th. So just past the Saturday, it was super exciting for me. Congrats. And I opened, originally I was a, um, I was an associate, which I, highly, highly encourage every single new grad to do because I think there's something to be said about learning what you like and what you dislike in practice. And I think that that is a wonderful opportunity as an associate because the one thing we don't really do in school is you do not learn business. So to be out there in the real world is awesome. I was an associate for Dr. Kravis in Redford, Michigan, and it was probably one of the greatest experiences of my life and sometimes today when I'm adjusting someone or I'm thinking of a decision I'm going to make I can literally hear him in my head talking to me he was a wonderful mentor and a great person to work for so when I graduated I was an associate for a year and a half and then I went into private practice in July of 2003 I started from scratch I rented space from someone and I used I used his clinic or utilized it on his days off and grew a practice, and within nine months, I opened my own facility, where I have been since April of 2004. And I started totally from scratch, so, That's so there's something awesome. to be said about that too, because when you purchase someone's practice, chiropractors practice so differently, and so 
I was actually advised don't purchase someone's practice because unless they practice the exact same way you do and have the exact same personality you do, it, it really doesn't matter that you bought, purchase someone's practice. And so that resonated with me at the time. So I'm super, super glad that I did start my practice from scratch because it taught me many, many things. And I'm so glad that, um, that I waited also for that year and a half to go into private practice. What a cool strategy and system. I love it. I think that there's so many people that will get takeaways from that, that honestly they would be like, well, why wouldn't I purchase a practice from somebody else? Well, that's why. <laughs> or, um, Absolutely. You, know, you can purchase a practice and you can purchase the files, but that patient can go right down the road if it's not exactly what they wanted. So it's a different kind of, you know, it's not like you're a dentist and you're purchasing a dental practice and everyone fills and drills the same way. Chiropractors are very, very different. So do you have any favorite motivational quotes or mantras? Oh, a million, but I think that in practice, or something that I live by, and something that resonates with me, well, first two things. First is the golden rule, do unto others, because I truly feel that if you do everything and you think about that first, that at least you always feel good about yourself and you always sleep well at night. And second, business-wise, is to shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you land amongst the stars. So just go, go, go. Um, I'm a big, I trained with Dr. Fred for years. I'm a big rhino girl, so mochichu, charge forward without hesitation. So between always charging forward, never looking behind, and always shoot for the moon, because if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. I think those are the two best business mantras ever. <laughs> yeah, one of those is uh, Les Brown, who's one of my favorites. Yes, yes. So what would we be able to accomplish if more people knew about your cause and what's possible in the future with what you're doing? So my, what I love doing is showing chiropractors that they can have purpose, that they can grow a wonderful practice, and that they can be successful in practice. I think that's super huge and super important. I think that um, when someone is doing well, I feel that we tend to get a lot of haters. And I really want to express, you know, especially I work with a lot of women and with the Women Chiropractors Group. And it's so important to empower each other and to encourage each other, man or woman, and to help everyone to grow a wonderful, successful practice. The exact success, your successful practice is different. I don't care what modality you use. I don't care if you if you believe in subluxation and not using drugs. I'm you know I'm on board. So I think it's just really, really important that we encourage each other to be successful in practice because I I come from a city where basically. Every friend I had that was in college with me, were, they were studying for the MCATs and they wanted to go to medical school. And as soon as I said I wanted to go to chiropractic schools, oh, you know, I want, I want people to look at us and say, wow, that's awesome. You're a chiropractor. I'd love for my child to be a chiropractor when they grow up. So I think it's really important that we make our profession look awesome. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I love the idea of uh, mentorship and empowering and uh, supporting each other. I uh, once did a talk up in the Boulder uh, Philosophy Night, and I called it uh, Unity Through Diversity. And I came up with that title by talking with Danny Knowles before it. And uh, he's like, you know, he gave me 48 hours notice because somebody canceled their call or they canceled their talk. And he's like, I need somebody. Can you do it? <laughs> wow. And, yeah. But I, I dug deep because that was at a point in my career where I was asking engagement questions every day. I was basically pulling the profession on a daily basis, um, really like getting interaction from so many people. You know how everybody nowadays is like, you know, pushing questions and getting responses at a massive level. Um, we were a couple of the first that were actually doing that, surveying the chiropractic profession and getting nitty gritty with a lot of these questions. But I honestly think that interaction and supporting each other um, with, you know, what we called it unity through diversity like you're talking about um, I think that that's highly important and I think it's highly important to have good uh, leadership and successful mentorship as well yes I think it's really important I think it's really important to pay it forward 100% and you know there's so many people out there that we can help support that will change the world because of our tutelage mm-hmm 
So where do you see the chiropractic profession in 20 years? I think that every household will have a chiropractor. I think there'll be no one on the planet that does not see a chiropractor because as soon as you understand what chiropractic is, people do not see chiropractors because they are ignorant. And I don't mean that in a negative sense. I mean they truly don't understand or have the knowledge of how far-reaching chiropractic is and what it does for our nervous system. And I believe that when the population, when, and that's why we need these awesome, successful, wonderful chiropractors, because the more we can get that message out there, the more that we can spread the good news of what chiropractic can do for you, um, or I believe that the, I mean, there's not there's no one on the planet who would not be under chiropractic care if they understood chiropractic thoroughly. Yeah, and I agree with you. But how do you think that we get that point across to people to actually take them to a different direction, saying, "Hey, chiropractors are nervous system docs, and they are ultimate wellness uh, practitioners." And it's not about your neck pain and back pain, even though that's probably your motivator. They do a good job of getting people out of that symptomatology. But how do we uh, bridge the gap so people are like always shaking their head? Yes, like, of course, chiropractic. Well, that's funny that you say that because something I realized very recently is this thing called social media. (laughs) And I was never going to be on social media. I have thousands, tens of thousands of emails at one time, and I did not want one more thing on my plate. And this past February, February 23rd, I opened a Facebook account, and I have, just like anything else, I have 10x the Facebook, and I love social media, and I want to learn everything about it, and I think one of the biggest ways is going to be social media, um, Facebook, and videos and getting out there. I've never seen something that reaches masses so quickly like Facebook and social media. And I really think this is going to, this is going to change our world because it still is pretty new. I mean, I know it's been around maybe even 10 years, but it's still pretty new. And I think that, um, I think that's going to be a huge component in this. And people like you look go, going around the world and spreading the good news of chiropractic and without Facebook or social media, I wouldn't know you. We wouldn't know each other. We wouldn't be able to form these tribes together and go out and uh, spread the good news of chiropractic to the world. It, I love how everyone is now forming larger groups to help more people. Yeah, it's really impressive. It's uh, Honestly, it's humbling to me to see how quickly things can move and how fast that we can uh, start working together on different levels that weren't possible before. Yeah. And how we can congratulate each other on a daily basis or check in with each other on a daily basis. And we don't have to so much jump on the phone like we used to or we don't have to so much send a text message to somebody. But I think that there's a lot of people out there that are spending their time on the scroll, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, wherever they go for their news sources. Um or wherever they go for their like community sources, I think the game has changed quite a bit. And I really have, I do think in the past 10 years, uh, chiropractic has gotten more involved on social media and making videos and things of that nature. So I think, yeah, it's going in a positive direction. Now I'm gonna ask you a question on top of that is, what do you think is the most innovative thing to come into the chiropractic space in the past 10 years? Mm. Besides social media. Social media and groups, groups <laughs> of groups of chiropractors who are bonding together to help each other. Okay. So five years ago, I would have never known about you know Black Diamond Club or women chiropractors or the boot camp or many of these groups where you are you are bonding with people that you resonate with who are like minded. A DE, the uh, the ICA, all of these different groups that you can form these bonds with other chiropractors and and to help each other. So besides social media, we now have relationships and more groups that we can be a part of, that we can give ideas uh, to each other and support each other uh, for for marketing venues. So more at a national level with that, and in our own communities, you know, just I think it's really important that we're out there if we want. If we want to see the world under chiropractic care and you're not a part of your chamber, you know, shame on you. If you're not a part of your local groups that you can always be networking and connecting with, 
you know, shame on you. We need to be out there. This is our duty and our responsibility to spread the word of chiropractic to those who are not chiropractors so that they can learn about what we do. So we're all doing that on a local level. I, can you imagine the change that that would make? I, I 100% agree, and I think that it comes from, um, you know, moving from certain platforms like moving away from film processing x-rays to, you know, getting on with uh, digital x-ray or yeah. move, moving on from calling people they miss their appointments and you send them a direct text, you know, moving on from how you, you know, run an ad on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube to how you had to, you know, send out flyers and mailers and stuff of that nature. So yeah. I, I think that we are moving in a, a different transition, but then I also tell people that they have to do external marketing. Like you said, that you have to join their groups. And uh, I think that that's a little bit more uh, conveyor belt technology uh, systems. But I think that also, you know, going out there and going palm to palm with people, knee to knee with people, and then, you know, heart to heart with people, you're going to win over more people that are going to speak uh, happily and proud about your local business. And that's really what those groups are for is to build local business. So yeah. I, I do think that those are important. But then I'm a king screener. So I also think going out and screening and hitting the streets and meeting people that are in the public is, in my opinion, one of the quickest rate ways to grow a healthy practice, too. So, you know, not only Absolutely. I mean, there's so many things that we can do, but digital has changed the game for sure. Yes. When I first opened my practice, I went to a health and business expo and literally I believe I had at least 30 new patients from that weekend. And talk about a way to start a new practice. That's a good way. So you do. You need to be out there at the screening. You need to meet, be meeting people in the community. So I think that is very important. I think that I, I had a lot of chiropractors say to me, you advertise? Like, that's below me. Like, because they're too good to advertise. I know. You know. Marketing works. Advertising works. They don't want to save more lives. That's all they're telling you. Yeah. <laughs> So I know you have a unique situation. You get to work with your husband. Talk about that a little bit. Well, actually, I, now, this year, yes. But until this year, we've never worked in the same office ever. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So I went into private practice first in July of 2003. Adam opened his private practice in November of 2004. Um, we have never worked in each other's practices ever. So we are two total separate entities. And we sat down, and for the last couple of years, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Dr. Barb Eaton for this, but we were actually in Vegas, March of 2000, and I guess 17. And I had been talking about, you know, there's a time where you say, what do I want to invest in? And she kept saying, open more practices. And I would say, and I would have a lot of colleagues and advisors say that to me, and I would say, I do not want to do that. I don't want to do that. So I was almost to the point, you know, do I, do I want to buy a strip mall? Do I want to buy real estate? Do I, what do I want to do to invest? And it really just hit me after a discussion with Dr. Bard was, this is going to be the ultimate gift back. I want to help other chiropractors. I want to take their hand. I want to bring them in. I want to open a practice. I want to let them buy that practice and let them go from two chiropractors. So Adam and I decided to open this business together just this year to literally help chiropractors be more successful or to be successful, to bring them into practice, to get them going in their own practice and to wash our hands, to walk away and let them go on their way. Because I think that that's super important. And I'm really excited. Obviously, it's a win-win for both parties. But I feel that... When you have two separate doctors who've done exceptionally well take on a new grad or a new doctor and to help take their hand and lead them lead the way and not to let go of that hand until they've made it, and that's that is our goal, that is our promise, that is our duty. I can't wait I can't wait to see this end result. I'm super, super excited. So that's what we started working together this year, is we formed our own group and um, we're going to be doing this, and we've already opened number one, just opened on June 1st. So we're super excited about that. So tell us a chiropractic miracle story. What's one of the toughest cases that you were able to help with? You know, it's so funny because I think that 
as chiropractors, it's got to be something just mind-blowing what other people would think all of these things are miracles and I think that as chiropractors we see miracles what people would call miracles on a daily basis but one or two that I really just was very touched by um, was I I have a diplomate in um, pediatric chiropractic so I love kids and um, a huge portion a huge population of my practice is pediatric care I had one child who um, was going actually used for my research project for my um, ICA, or I'm sorry, ICPA, was a child who had um, otitis media, had ear infections, and was going to um, going to be getting tubes in their ears. And the parents said, "Well, let's just you know try chiropractic because for some reason." You know, most parents will try every drug, every surgery, or before surgery, maybe a last-ditch effort is chiropractic for two weeks. Um, but this child responded amazingly to chiropractic, and within, I would say within three weeks, their pediatrician or their pediatric ENT um, told them they no longer needed to have the surgery or have tubes in their ears, and that was amazing to me. It was so touching to me at the time. Um, another pediatric patient who was... Um, they were considering surgery in the helmet, and we worked uh, with that infant for, I would say, three to four weeks. And again, you get these amazing calls from the children's hospital and what happened and what did you do? And it's just, it's an amazing, it's been an amazing journey for me with pediatric chiropractic. And I think that we see miracles every day, children who wet the bed, who no longer wet the bed, children with asthma who no longer have to take their medication because their doctor took them off of it because they no longer need it. It's To me, I see miracles every day and I love chiropractic. I love to see children and families living healthy lifestyles. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Dr. Barbara Eaton's 56-Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, Dr. Alok Trivedi, The Black Diamond Club, Element Mattresses, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, MedZone, Vantage Point Marketing, Movo University, The Universal Tractioning System, Imaging Services, and Zingit Solutions. Let's hustle. So what are some of your key marketing strategies? Like how, how did you guys build such successful practices and also what is your real life uh, marketing education where did you learn to do all this stuff so i learned it on the streets (laughs) and you do that when broke would be rich so when i graduated from school i think that everybody should be broke when they graduate from chiropractic school i think that students should not be allowed to live with their parents for more than one year after they graduate i have lots of rules of what i think that students or new chiropractors should do to be successful. And it's amazing what someone will do to keep getting $50 from their parents or $50 from somewhere a month. It's absolutely unbelievable to me. Um, I am a huge, 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 huge believer in grassroots and always, always living way under your means. So I lived like a college student as a chiropractor for about way, way, way longer than I needed to, probably for about 10 years after I graduated. And super broke when I graduated, as you should be as a college student, uh, with huge student debt. And I knew that the only way I was going to make it was free marketing. So I think that when someone gives you a marketing budget and you have no money, you don't value the money that you're spending. I earned every penny that I used on marketing from being a chiropractor, from being out there. So in the beginning, what I would do When I opened my doors, I was in my practice on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And even half of those days when I first went out, I would go out and go to every business. On Tuesday and Thursday, I would go to at least two businesses each Tuesday and Thursday and Saturday. And I would talk to people. And, you know, if you want to do something very humbling, do that for grassroots. Go see if you can do screenings at, you know, your GNCs or health food stores or gyms that are local to you. And you're going to get nine no's. But then you're going to get one yes. (laughs) So that's how I did it. I literally built my practice from zero. So as I would earn this money, the first thing I did was around here, there's something called ValPath, which is a coupon book. 
and, and I'm still with Valpac today, and I've been doing it since 2003. So once I did screenings, had the money come in, then I started Valpac. Then, after I earned more money, then I would keep adding additional marketing components until um, I was doing commercials. I have billboards now. But I earned everything that I did. I never went to a bank. I never went anywhere for this money. So I think that grassroots is huge. I'm Today, I'm on my um, Chamber of Commerce board. I think it's so important to be to connected and rubbing shoulders with all the movers and shakers of your community. And it's wonderful this business advice in general, not even just chiropractic, but to be involved with those people and with your city and with your local government and um, with the local school system. So that was for that's what I did for marketing when I first graduated is I would go out and do screenings. And again, every week I would get nine no's for every one yes. So I hope that anyone out here who is listening to this who's a new grad Keep asking, keep knocking on doors, keep talking to people. Getting a no is normal. And every time you get that yes, you're looking at one new patient, 10 new patients, 20 new patients. Because every time someone comes in, they're going to love you and they're going to refer their friends and family. So it's not just that patient that comes in from the screening. It's building upon that. So I loved I love grassroots marketing, and I think that if more chiropractors or more business owners in general started that way, I think they would be more success, successful much more quickly. You know, I couldn't agree with you more, and just think about how many no's I had in that two and a half years that I scheduled in 2,500 people. I did yeah. 600 events. Just think about that. I mean, just for the sheer volume of, you know, having a, a no rejection policy. Like, yeah, I, I told myself. And it's, <laughs> and it's normal. Like when they say no, it's okay. And what what is wrong is not going out there and not meeting people. Yeah, and you know, like you said, it's our duty. And when we have the conviction in our heart that we love what we do, it's not putting ourselves out there in an awkward situation. It's actually no. it's actually business building and brand it is. And, and brand and don't building. Be wrong, especially for the new grants out there. If anyone's li like listening to this. It does feel awkward. When you first go out there, you're so scared. You're so nervous. It's almost like you know you're going to get the no and walk in like you know you're going to get a yes and let them tell you no, but you just have to keep doing it. You have to keep acting as if, right? Yeah, and you know, it's like having any kind of conditioning that you're not used to. Nobody wants to go do stuff that they're timid with or they're not used to doing or, you know, that might be a challenge for them. It's 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 like going to the gym when you're not fit, you know? It takes a lot of moxie for you to actually get yourself to that point to go out there and say, you know what, I kind of like this and it helps me. Yes. You know, and build, building muscle or building business muscle are the same way. And one, yeah. of the, one of the way to quickly build business muscle is to go out there to your community and harvest your community and show up and tell people what you do and how you can help them. Yeah, so I, w I would say my, my greatest marketing strategy is to be completely, completely a part of your community. And it's so important, and not just because of the business, but you want to be a business partner in that community, and you want to be a part of that community, and you want to help it grow. I've had a scholarship for our local high school for, I guess, for 14 years now. I've, you know, I've always, I, you want to be a part of the community, you want people to know you, you want to know everyone, and you want to help out. It's so important to volunteer and to, and to give to your local community. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned something earlier. One of the things that you just recently got onto was uh, the social media platform Facebook. But what else do you, uh, what's your favorite app other than Facebook to keep you engaged with your audience? Well, Facebook is my first, but I'm <laughs> going to be learning how to do this uh, Instagram and I'll probably learn Twitter. Honestly, this is my first. Love it. And. <laughs> It's, it's exciting, but it's just, it's a, you know, it's a lot. So I'm learning Facebook right now, and I, I want to learn more. My favorite app on my phone is Delta. <laughs> is that because you fly so much? It does keep me connected to my community. <laughs> <laughs> I just recently uh, got into Instagram. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with that one. Yes, I'm very excited about that. So I'm actually going to do um, Matt Loop's Social Media Summit in August. So I'm prepared to learn everything at this summit, hopefully. Well, heck, then I'm going to start learning from you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so 
in your leisure time, what what kind of things do you like to uh, read and listen to? Are you in the middle of any good books right now? Uh, well, I just, I recently uh, listened to Relentless, which I love, Tim Grover. That was awesome. I love anything Grant Cardone. And I listen to his voice at least once a day. And I think that if you are, if you want to be super successful in life, in business, in relationship, you got to listen to some GC because you will get there. It's just absolutely amazing listening to, I don't care how successful you are or how active or energetic you are, you will feel lazy and you'll feel like, what have I been doing? If you, if you listen to Grant Cardone for, for 10 minutes. So that's someone I listen to all the time, and it really just keeps me going. You could just put on one chapter, and you're good to go. So that's really inspiring to me. I love to read uh, business books, finance books. I love um, just uh, self-development. That's what I like to listen to. And I think that's also really important in our field is that we always are developing, that we're not stagnant, that we're always evolving and changing. Yeah, I have a... The, one of the stickers from 10x growth con uh, says sell, sell or be sold on my vision board in front of me yes <laughs> the one so I, important the or what one, is it your net your net worth is is your network so you got to have a good network and you got to all you always have to be out there the one i chose for my vision board is who's got my money <laughs> who's got my money <laughs> Yeah, we, we both had fun with those stickers when we came back from there. And that's where you originally saw uh, Tim Grover, right? You saw him speak at uh, 10X? Yeah, um, I don't, I'm not sure if I saw Tim Grover at 10X, but I just listened to his book, Relentless, which I love. Yeah, he spoke at 10X. It was awesome. Man, I can't believe I missed him there. <laughs> so, nice <laughs> so where would people go if... Uh, they wanted to learn more about you and your clinics. Do you have any good uh, websites or social media pages you want people to know about? Well, my Facebook page is my name, and Michigan Chiropractic Specialist, it's michiropractic.com is our website. There's a plethora of information there about us. Uh, and like I said, we're now, you can always contact us through the website uh, or through Facebook. You can always message me. I'm always here for anyone. I always, people will reach out to me, people I do not know, and I always, always communicate and reach back. I love when people reach out and say, hey, you know, I see that you do this. Can you help me with this? I love that. I think we should all be reaching out our hand and helping each other. So if anybody uh, wants any advice or wants to bounce something off of me, I'm, you know, I'm always open to that. And I think people are surprised by that when you respond to them and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you got back to me and so quickly. And I think if I can help anyone, that, that we're doing our job. That's what we should be doing. So, And if anyone's interested in our program in Michigan for doctors, if you plan perhaps on practicing in Michigan, please contact us because we're looking for uh, 10 superstars. That's so cool. Um, so at this point, I ask you, is there anything that we didn't ask you that you'd like to share with our audience? Uh, no, but I would <laughs> like to give a wonderful shout out to both you and to Luke because we have needed Cairo Hustle in our industry for so long and it's so neat and so cool to see you everywhere. You're literally everywhere interviewing all the movers and shakers, the influencers, and it's just, it makes me feel so proud of our profession and that you that you guys have such integrity and that you're out there making such a difference and a change and you're spreading the word of chiropractic and i just think you guys are both so awesome and chiro hustle is amazing well thank you very much it means a lot to hear that from you thank you 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 know a lot of times there's a lot of thankless hours where we're just either hustling between location to location or we're putting in like weird like convoluted hours over the weekend where most people are probably you know hanging out with their families so yeah i appreciate the recognition because there's a lot of times where we do work awfully long days and we produce a lot of content so thank you for for the nice words yeah absolutely you guys are awesome i can't wait to see (laughs) this next year i can't even believe it (laughs) and uh jim and i are really excited to uh come out and help you guys promote all your clinics and we are very excited to see you guys again. That would be amazing, and we cannot wait to see you 
cannot wait. Thank you. And it's so nice to talk to you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just want to say, uh, hey, Adam, before we jump off, too. <laughs> Hi, Adam. <laughs> All right, Amanda. Well, you have a good day, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Have a great day, and, and uh, keep hustling. We will be. <laughs> you, too. <laughs> we'll see you later. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.